calm does not suit us. We're born for the storm. Why did I decide to serve in the Marine Corps? Well, of course, I was in high school when the war broke out, and uh, I graduated in 1943. And uh, I, wanted to, I, I wanted to serve, everyone wanted to serve. I had three uh, brother-in-laws, all that had already enlisted in the services. And uh, I wanted to be, my goal uh, for prior is to be a Marine, so that's why I signed up. And of course, in 1943, uh, everybody that was able of man, men, uh, you, you probably were going to be drafted anyway, but there was so much desire for people to serve that uh, they had primarily enlistments, and uh, I was eager to go. So. I was 17 year old and the day, the day I uh, graduated from high school, uh, well, 11 days later, I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, I do believe that we were the doc democracy that uh, from the very beginning envisioned that there was a alternative way to run a nation as an empire, and that in our constitution, it said that we had, you know, the right to life, life liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and uh, uh, what was happening in Europe, and then of course, the attack on Pearl Harbor, uh, we had to do something about that. And that's what, uh, why I went in the service. Well, uh, my first, when I, I went aboard the Missouri, and uh, uh, I was part of a, you know, the small group that was on the Missouri, all of us had some sack. My particular task was to be part of a machine gun that was used against any aircraft work. And uh, before that, I had no training for it. I never fired a machine gun, and I didn't fire that one, but I was part of a team of five people that took uh, machine uh, uh, bullet uh, uh, canteens, containers, and, you know, put them in the, uh, in the thing so they could be shotting off at, at crack aircraft gun. That was my primary job. I was on the board, yes, for, uh, I had been on it less than half a year, but uh, that had been my, yes, that was, and I was part of the honor guard that uh, stood uh, where the, all the uh, Japanese representatives aboard came, and prior to that, the various uh, leaders of the different uh, countries that were to sign the deck, they all uh, came up and uh, we were there at the head of that. Uh, and one of our, one of our uh, people uh, had the task of frisking the uh, so-called enemy uh, to make sure they didn't have uh, machines up any uh, ammunition or thing like that. I think that was primarily a symbolic thing that always happened. Oh boy, it's, well, first of all, it was uh, a great celebration that uh, it meant that the war was now over and the killing had stopped. And, uh, and obviously that's what we had been invited, advised, uh, uh, that was our past. But up until uh, just the couple of months before uh, that, uh, the anticipation was there would be an invasion of the land party of Japan. And, but by the time, uh, well, the last couple of weeks, of course, it was obvious we, that wasn't going to happen. And this was the 
opportunity of signing the documents that brought that to an end. Sure, well, the motions, you. well, the first one, of course, is the excitement that that was over and that uh, uh, we had representatives of, of uh, all the allied uh, friends that had been part of the war, uh, even the Russians uh, that had come into the, the uh, Pacific War in the last week before this. Uh, they were a, a crew that wanted to get, uh, you know, coverage for themselves. And their, their area was right behind us in the honor guard. And they needed to get closer where they could get better pictures. And uh, we had a, it was, it was a, a friendly one, a conversation uh, with some of them or one of them, only one of them spoke English. And, uh, but uh, we were, you know, and, but even before that, uh, we had, we had, we were aware that uh, they were our allies during the war, but when the war was over, they were, they were probably going to be our enemies. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that was you know, my anticipation. My, the, the basic thing that went on in my mind, however, was the challenge that Douglas MacArthur, the general that signed for us, the challenge that he threw at us on the on the ship, but of course to the entire world, a challenge to not just stop thwarting the the war, but challenged us to seek and pursue peace. Well, the 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 the, the memory that I have, I don't know if it was others, but it was my summary that, yes, this was the end of the fighting, but this wasn't the initiation of peace. My, my background, uh, that, that began especially a couple of weeks before that on August 6th, when they announced aboard the ship, now hear this, now hear this, we've just uh, dropped an atomic bomb I think they call it a atomic bomb, on Hiroshima, the city in Japan, and totally wiped out the city. And on our board, on our ship, the, 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 a lot of the fellows around were saying, hooray, hooray, the war is over. Let's drop a bomb on Tokyo and kill a million of those Japs. And when I heard that, I, 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 I initially had that idea myself. And then I got thinking, wait a minute, what am I doing here? And that night I went up on the front, the top of the, of the uh, bow of the ship and uh, sat there in and, and, and quiet, dark, nobody was around. I, I, I cried and I was thinking, what's happening to me? What's happened to all of us? What's happened to the, you know, we're celebrating killing a million people or a hundred thousands of people. And we're celebrating saying, wow, isn't this wonderful? Let's get all, let's get all of them. And I'm saying, you know, if, if, that's, if that's what we're doing, we're not getting peace. I remember, I, I remembered when my grandfather died he was lying in the pa in the casket, and somebody said, "Look how he's so peaceful." And I thought, "Peaceful? He's dead." And and that was my attitude. Wait a minute, peace isn't just stopping the ki uh, the war. The the why did we go in the war? Well, the war was because there was all kinds of conflicts, and the war was the Japs uh, in that war. Their solution was to go to Har Pearl Harbor and drop bombs and so on. Our job was, our task was to uh, oppose it with uh, our strength and all. And, 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 but if that was the condition, that wasn't peace before, it was just the absence of war. And later we heard uh, uh, Douglas MacArthur say to us, 
we've got to pursue in peace what we had won in war. But he said uh, that he added, but we've, you know, if our, our task is to devise some other solution to those policies, those, the issue of how, uh, of, of, of nations that ended up in a conflict to pursue peace doesn't guarantee, unless you pursue it by resolving those conflicts. And so that for me to go leave and people say, good, now I can go home because we're back in peace. No, we're back in the absence of, absence of war. But there, the policies of, of, of justice for people, of uh, freedoms for people, of, of all the, you know, uh, all that that was that existed before it was the causes of the war it was the cause in germany and uh, that went to war they they came up with solutions to the, their problem they they had they blamed it on the jews they blamed it on the versailles treaty all those those were just excuses and they were the problems that led them to fighting we didn't solve those problems. And so now the task for me was to, you know, I, I'm going to go home, but I, the question for me that day was, but what does this mean for me? And that day I decided I'm going to be a peacemaker. And that, that was a firm, I had no idea what that meant for me. But I went home and I started, uh, and I started, uh, what, what does it mean to, to work for peace? Not the absence of war, but the full ideas that we thought we had in, in our democracy. But I realized we didn't have all of them, and today we still don't have them. You know, the injustices of uh, black people, the injustice of uh, immigrants that uh, we're walling with, the refusal to solve the uh, create, uh, you know, climate problems that exist. Uh, Dr. MacArthur in his speech said, hey, science has come up with all kinds of in, uh, war, uh, ideas as illustrated by the uh, nuclear bombs that we were dropping and uh, and unless we come up with a new way to achieve peace in the world, uh, the, uh, he he said, it's Armageddon. It's the uh, it's it's the destruct destruction of of uh, humanity, destruction of the earth. And and we're still uh, and I went home and <laughs> I started you know college university. I decided I'm going to be a minister. Actually, I became a Lutheran pastor. After I did that, I, I still didn't know what war was, I, uh, what peace was. Oh, I had some ideas, but I, you know, and, and I found that people wanted to hear me talk. He, they thought religion was about having just peace inside yourselves. But peace is more than that. It's, it's relating to all of our relations to one another. And for other people out there, and it's still the lesson that we need to pursue. Uh, it was described by uh, General MacArthur. It was described by our Admiral Halsey and the uh, message that he uh, gave us that day and sent out to the world that even with the Japanese, it's interesting, when I was in high school, I, I remember going to school, and uh, two of my favorite uh, two friends there were the Hagasaki boys, and uh, they happened to be stars on the football team. And one day I went, and they weren't there anymore. A couple of days went by, and we didn't know what happened to them. And then we learned the government had taken them out of school, taken their families and put them off on these camps. Uh, they were really concentration camps is what they were. And 
uh, and and so that you know we we were applying to what Germany, uh, what Eng excuse me, what ja Japan had done, and applying it to American citizens here in the United States. Hey, wait a minute, these guys were third generation Japanese. They they were as American as I was. And it was that kind of thing that we're still dealing with that issues. Uh, you know, we got 10% of our population or more uh, that are black. We have uh, a, th a third of our population uh, here in California, half of our children are people of color. And they still got ha haven't got all the uh, uh, same advantages of education and 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 even e even they're being pressed to lose their fighting rights and all. So what did I experience that day? I experienced the decision to be a peacemaker, and it's it's set my whole life. I my the, the, uh, somebody said to me the famous saving. Uh, don't lead the path that's worn for you, but find a new path and leave your own tra trail. And I think that's what America needs to do. We had a vision of uh, what it meant, pursuit of happiness and freedom for all, the Constitution says, but we haven't fulfilled it in our own uh, life. We. I, I served three years, uh, you know. They said, Dr. Pedersen, we want you to come go to Africa in a new university there. And I went there to represent how the religions of, uh, in that situation might contribute and bring peace. But I discovered, <laughs> and, I, and I've discovered here that even religion hasn't learned the peace about uh, how, how to have peace in the world. We, we think our way is the, the only way. And of course, <laughs> people of deep some spirituality knows that all religions have a sense of what peace is and that the presence of the divine, the holy God is, is part of our lives. And we tend to uh, you know, say, no, it's our conception, but it's you know, there'll be no peace in the world until religions are at peace. And of course, there's no gonna be worse, no a peace in the United States until we deal with the uh, problems of injustice. And there's gonna be no peace in the world if we don't learn that climate change is, is, uh, is no longer an option. That's what Douglas said in his speech that day. He said, this, that the, the, uh, the, the, the history of trying to solve international relations through uh, war uh, isn't going to be possible to me anymore. And it isn't possible until we go and not just pursue peace, but peace more than the absence of violence is peace where all people and all nations have the, uh, the, the, the same goals that we have as a nation, but which we haven't, we, we have it as a goal, but we haven't put it into practice. And, and, and I, as Jer Jerry Pedersen, Dr. Pedersen, with my experiences and all, has made that my, uh, my goal in life. And so that's why, that's why I was going to, to, uh, to uh, uh, Hawaii for the celebration of the end of war. But more than that, it was celebration of the challenge that was thrown at us there to create peace in this world so that at least in international relations, we don't have to try to conflict by, try to end conflicts by people uh, working together uh, or uh, in, 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 uh, killing one another through war. Uh, yes, <laughs> that, that, that's, 
that was the environment that I was in that day. And I, I, ho I, 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 I have to believe there were other people. It's the one we tend to forget that what we, what we, what we call as our goals in life and assume that, yeah, we're living them out. But of course, <laughs> that's still a, something that has to be uh, realized fully. Faith whispers to the warrior, you cannot withstand the storm. The warrior whispers, I am the storm.